But let me first introduce uh, Chairman uh, Hideki Kato from the chairman of the Tokyo Foundation. Uh, he's also uh, president of Japan Initiative, which is a not-for-profit independent think tank. Uh, he has also, since uh, October, uh, been secretary general of the Hatayama Cabinet's Government Revitalization Unit, uh, which is charged with rooting out wasteful government spending. Uh, we're going to see if we can get him to come to Washington and do the same thing after he's uh, done solving uh, Japan's problems. Uh, he has a long and distinguished uh, career of government service beginning in 1973 in the Ministry of Finance. Uh, so let me at this point to turn the podium over to uh, Chairman Kato, please. Okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you very much for attending the Tokyo Foundation uh, seminar. <clears throat> um, actually, I've never seen such a bird view map. <laughs> this, uh, for me, it's quite nice. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a great honor for me to be given the opportunity to speak of to you about the current political situation in Japan. The map shows Kasumigaseki within the blue line, and next to Kasumigaseki called in Japanese political world Nagata Cho, which is the mainly the politicians area, and Kasumigaseki it's mainly bureaucratic or, bu or bureaucrats area, and it's a story something be in between Kasumigaseki and Nagata Cho. That's what I want to talk about. Um, uh, my address is uh, motivated by the fact that the Japanese system of governance is not well understood by those outside Japan. On that point, the Tokyo Foundation has drafted a report on the subject. Please take a look at my article on page seven in the booklet that has been handed out today, titled Insights into Japanese Politics and Society. And uh, what I'm talking now be only my personal view, not as a Secretary General uh, of the Government Revitalization Unit. Um, today, I'd like to focus on two things. The first is governance and the political system in Japan. And the second is the Hatoyama administration. What is trying to do? What is happening at the moment and the future prospects? Um, a parliamentary cabinet system is generally understood to consist of a process whereby political parties publish manifestos or policy platforms. The party on coalition or parties that wins an election and has a majority in the parliament assembles a cabinet and ministers appointed to take charge of the policies advocated in the ruling party's manifesto implement those politics using bureaucrats as a staff. This is the true meaning of political leadership. But in Japan, uh, until the last general election, both parties and voters have tended to pay little heed to manifestos, even though they are essential to the first step of the process and little effort has been put into producing them. The subsequent steps in the process of political leadership have not been established. Um, uh, <clears throat> the factors behind this situation include the multi-member constituency system that Japan employed until the 1990s and the fact that for many years the public did not need to make major political choices. At the root, however, the problems arising from the manner in which the parliamentary cabinet system has been employed in Japan. Please refer to pages two and 
three of the handout, chart one and chart two. Excuse me, this, uh, on, um, yeah, on your table, you should have not, a packet. Not in the booklet, yeah, but... It's called sorry. Challenges Facing the New DPJ this Government, and, and you will see a, s a series of slides, and that's what we're referring to. As shown in chart one, in an ideal parliamentary cabinet system, the ruling party formulates policies based on its manifesto and a cabinet comprising influential members of the ruling party is um, formed to implement those policies. Based on cabinet discussions of uh, basic principles for managing state affairs, cabinet ministers implement the policies utilizing the bureaucrats in their respective ministers. As the cabinet considers policies from the perspective of the overall management of state affairs, this mechanism holds the interests of individual ministries in check and enables bureaucratic uh, sectionalism and regulatory redundancy to be eliminated. The reality of the system as it has been practiced so far in Japan, however, greatly differs from the ideal as shown in chart two in this setup. The ministries come first and bureaucrats take charge of everything from policy formulation to implementation in areas that are within the mandates of their respective <clears throat> ministries. Ministers are effectively figureheads who simply sit on top of that structure, as shown by the fact that at their inaugural press conferences, the <clears throat> vast majority of ministers wrote out text prepared by bureaucrats. Most ministers, moreover, have taken to promoting the existing policies of their ministries and speaking for the ministries uh, interests and positions, as soon as they are appointed, no matter what views they may have espoused earlier. As a result, the ministerial coordination and cabinet leadership expected in a true parliamentary cabinet system uh, take a back seat. The priority given to precedent and bureaucratic sectionalism makes it difficult for the government to effect drastic policy shifts or to respond swiftly to changing social conditions. Under the new administration led by the Democratic Party of Japan, DPJ, the so-called Council of Three Political Level Appointees, comprising the minister senior vice minister and parliamentary secretary has been established within each ministry. This is intended to enable politicians to take the lead in determining government policy rather than bureaucrats. Newly appointed cabinet ministers of previous Liberal Democratic Party administ administration were first given a briefing by the bureaucrats. Soon after, the senior vice ministers and parliamentary secretaries were appointed by the Prime Minister Yukio Hatoyama. By contrast, meetings of the political level council were held on the very day or within several days of the appointments. As a rule, the new administration also banned press conferences by administrative vice uh, ministers, the highest ranking bureaucrats, so as to revamp the decision making mechanism that had hitherto been led by the bureaucracy. From these, we can observe that the new administration's trial for change 